Hello everyone and welcome to this rather special episode of Virtual Rambling. Um, for this one I'll be exploring the Amaze Berlin Virtual Convention for indie games and weird and wonderful gamey things, music and everything else besides. So this is the ninth Amaze Convention for 2020. As you can see, um, oh. I'm just in time for a live stream of some sort. All the uh, other players are <laughs> like 2D flamingos. She's awesome. <laughs> stream hall. Let's go to the stream hall. Wow. This is awesome. Movement, zoom in, now interact. Submit text over Jump and fly. Teleport back. Confetti. Oh man, this is awesome. I have never been to anything like this before. Wow, this is incredible. I am um, I've not been to many games conventions in my life. I went to Gamescom back in 2009, uh, so long ago and I love how janky all of this is. This is incredible. And yeah, every single flamingo you see here is like another person. Hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of other games conventions I've been to. I've been to like Comic Con in Manchester, which doesn't really count, I guess. I think I went to maybe an EGX in London, like to see the Old Republic back in, I don't know, maybe 2012, 2011. Amaze, not dead. So yeah, obviously because of the virus and everything. <laughs> it's 
so you can see everyone who's like, I guess, sponsored, maybe put money towards this. I recognise some of the names on here, like uh, Cosmo D, who's made of Peak and the Norwood Suite. Sort of humble bundle on here, which doesn't surprise me. See a lot of names. Pippin Barr, he was a writer at Rock Paper Shotgun at one point. Recode, who made um, a self-care app and has written lots of really interesting articles on like um, doing other things in game other than enacting violence. Interesting stuff. Awesome. Well done everyone. Throw some confetti. <laughs> the um, this level design is by a developer called Mosh Link. Um, I don't know all of his stuff, but he made quite a famous game called Fugue and Void, which is like a really strange artistic kind of experience, I guess. He didn't move around much in the game, that's how I remember it, but it was something to behold, the kind of, um, the kind of, like, cinematography of it all. It's really interesting. So I'm guessing this is the actual games. During lockdown and, you know, COVID and all that rubbish, um, the closest thing that's kind of come to this is Devolver Digital's like E3 like level they put out and it was only for like I don't know maybe five or six games and in that when you explored like a game space you were forced to watch the trailer and there was this stupid like shooter element to it where you had to shoot at robots and rubbish and I found it really disappointing <laughs> Um, and I'd hope they'd done something a bit more like this. I, uh, you know, I think E3 could have easily have done something like this, um, but they just they didn't. <laughs> and you know, leave it to indie developers to be the kind of pragmatic and enterprising people to kind of create something like this space. This is incredible. And every little store's got its own like little graphics and videos and stuff, and you're not forced to watch any of it. If you get close to the screen, it just plays by itself. If you get bored, you can walk away. Um, Cool. Looks a bit like flow. Yeah, not so much walking in this thing, I think. <laughs> like some sort of painting toolbox I guess. It's kind of fun. <laughs>
this looks like some sort of life sim. That's cool. Um, yeah, all about ind indigenous Americans. And that's cool, you don't see enough games about indigenous Americans. driven some sort of exploration game collect seeds plant seeds with someone who's sick maybe have to help them interesting overseas I think I've heard of this one this one rings a bell I'm sure I've seen this in another stream of some sort Is a collection of four short art games Psychedelic Trip, Horror Story. Cool. Ah, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> Painting of a Cliff. Wow. Something happens with certain places. Where they begin to take on a life personality of their own. Where they start to act less like places and more like a person. You interact with such a place and perhaps it is more like a person. Recording, hoarding memories of the events they witness. Strung together, infinite paper dolls. You don't see what's going on here. <laughs> Sounds cool. Maybe next it's VR, so um, uh, it looks like it's for Oculus, but hopefully it will run in Windows Mixed Reality, which is what I've got. I'm already dead inside. My twisted world is so distorted. I could have seen this one on Twitter. Chris Damaging. Short person. Ah, there's Tales from Off Peak City, which is Cosmo D, who I mentioned earlier. That's cool. I was like, yeah, I've, I've done video, a video on his um, off-peak game, and I played Norwood Sweet like really shortly before that as well. Um, some stuff. He's obsessed with pizza. <laughs> it's kind of an ongoing joke. I think I've heard of this one as well. I think it might have been like a game that's all about building environments out of fractals. Uh, the kind of otherworldliness sort of fractals. 
Yeah. Ah, oh, this just... You know, you just wouldn't find this in the AAA space. Like, I don't know. Someone's made, like, a whole game idea out of this. And it's fantastic. Look how atmospheric it looks. It's incredible. Utopias. And funnily enough, I own this game because it was in the bundle for racist, racial justice and equality that it ran earlier this year. It's pay what you want from like five dollars onwards, and you got oh, like a thousand seven hundred games and books, and it was in there. Um, it's on my list of games to cover uh, on my channel, so I'll be looking at that one again, hopefully very soon. <laughs> Uncertainty. <laughs> Interactive installation, two players share a common time frame, but two distinct stories separated by a curtain. That's a cool idea. Live installations, man. Um, live installations are something that, you know, uh, yeah, basically I just don't get out enough to, enough kind of the types of events that run those kind of things. I really should. Nuts. Nuts I saw on um, another live stream recently, so it's, I got some, like, uh, heavy, like, Ah, uh, what was it called? Yeah, the the gameplay looks interesting. Like you start off like photographing wildlife, and it kind of turns into a bit of a like a mystery game. And just look at the kind of visuals as well, like the solid black colors and gradients. They look incredible. Mutation. So this is like. Isn't this like some sort of post-apocalyptic soap drama? I actually own this game because Epic gave it away free a while back. Um, Rock, Paper Shotgun seem to be talking about this game quite often as well. Um, it sounds good, but I've just not had time to play it yet. School Wars. Maybe it's a bit like School Days. It's really hard when you when you look at games not to compare them to oh shoot. To to space for uh how do I just not to compare them to other games? Because the travel of games, you know, can <laughs> I guess can only ever come from other media, be it other games, other books, other films. So it's really hard not to think about games in comparison to other games. Um, it's interesting, isn't it, that we don't just kind of take, don't just kind of view them as unique creations, but we have to instead think about them and how they relate to other things of the same or similar type. I don't know. But I guess you'd do that with books and films as well, wouldn't you? Like some sort of creepy visual novel. Life Sisters. Interesting. Body open source. Uh, looks like this one might be bugged. That's unfortunate. Oh, no, it's playing. Some sort of VR experiment where does the real body end and the virtual body begin? Oh, 
Lisa. This person experienced so much of you lose through memories, dreams, and fantasies. Sounds a little bit like, uh, uh, here I go again. Stop it, Simon. <laughs> Sounds a bit like Ether One, which is all about the um, the kind of inside of a person's head with dementia. Um, just like a really empty exploration game. Quite interesting. If found, Annapurna. I. I've loved most of Annapurna games that have come out so far. Annapurna seem to have a really good grasp of what makes a good game story. Um, well, they, they, they support devs. They're good at supporting devs who make good game stories. <laughs> More like... Choking. <coughs> Choking on my tea. <coughs> so I don't know, this looks like some sort of strange cosmic adventure. <coughs> it's curious. Interesting. I'm saying that about everything, aren't I? <coughs> Dust net. Oh, well, some sort of weird wireframe based first person shooter. A multiplayer server box. Preserving the ruins of the last remaining Counter Strike lobby. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> uh, I think I've seen this game. It's kind of a uh, yeah, kind of like a puzzle game. Getting strong manifold garden vibes off this one. Looks good. This too shall pass. Um, uh, what's Mark Lotz, um, who calls himself something like Moth, on uh, I think on Twitter or something. This is a really interesting, like concept game he made. Um, so. As far as I'm aware, he made like a huge environment um, across several different um, I think seasons and each season was put on a different USB stick and circulated around the world and then whenever anyone played it, it would like um, a bot would like upload pictures to Twitter of them playing it so there's this like wonderful screenshot bot on Twitter that's just posting shots from this like insanely pretty game he's made and you can actually, you can buy a version of the game for yourself um, I don't know which season it is or if it's like a separate thing altogether <clears throat> but basically the price of the game is based on how warm the world is um, so I think it's like $16 something right now um, and as the temperature rises the price of the game rises and each purchase of the game funds tree planting it's just I don't know it's a good ecological message and um, props to, to Matt Lotz who, uh, who made this for like 
doing something so kind of unique. Manifold Garden. Um, I've actually been playing this one recently. Uh, on, um, I think I got it on the Epic Store. <clears throat> so this is a what they call a non-Euclidean geometry first-person puzzle game, I guess. Um, it's by William... Oh, what's his name? William... I don't know how to pronounce that name. Kaya, maybe? As it says, it's Escher-esque. Um, I'm enjoying it so far. It's really funky. You know, you can... <clears throat> Can walk up surfaces. Uh, you basically walk to a wall, press spacebar, and then you walk up that wall. Um, environments just cycle for infinity. So if you jump off anything, you just fall until you kind of reach it again. It's awesome. <clears throat> I guess this is like some sort of FMV game. Interactive film. Cool. After Bandersnatch, um, you know, the Black Mirror thing on Netflix. Um, Anyway, to like turn that music down, it's kind of cool, but live stream volume. There we go. It's cool, but I, it's getting a bit kind of grating. <laughs> uh, yeah, after Bandersnatch, um, I got a massive appreciation for these like interactive films, and so many of them do what Bandersnatch did even better than Bandersnatch. Don't get me wrong, Bandersnatch was good. Swings don't swing. Digital scenery, playgrounds are not really usable in shooter games. For videos, swing in the room, they document different attempts to interact with dysfunctional objects. <laughs> oh, that is cute. <clears throat> yeah, playgrounds, they appear a lot in games. But I think, what, like, some of them honor those bases better than others like Half-Life 2 for example you could spin you know as a as a way of like demonstrating the the havoc physics system back in the day you know you could spin the roundabout you could swing the swing <laughs> um, when I was playing uh, the first person first person adventure game Cradle the other day there was a huge slide in it and you could go down the huge slide and that was cool because, you know, it, yeah, I remember watching my mate Sedgel at Sedge TV um, <clears throat> play Final Fantasy VII and he made clouds like there's a, like a playground, like a wrecked playground in that game and he tested whether Cloud would go down the slide and he would and it was, that's awesome. Like when they recognise what players do and like to do in games and you know players love to interact with things as they would in real life and uh, to see Cloud Strife this kind of edgelord super serious soldier dude just like <laughs> go down a slide in a playground it was awesome so it really made me laugh I like how you can just make confetti whenever you want. Ooh, that echoed. This looks like some sort of isometric game. It looks like you have to like push a light source around. I wonder what happens. 
sense of fear, like, leave the safety of the light source, maybe. The light source keeps you safe or something. Looks kind of cool. Co-op. Maybe. Is it co-op or maybe... It, it looks like there's two characters moving at the same time there, so yeah, co-op. That's cool. Creepy. Infini. I don't think I looked at this one. I've got a feeling. Lose yourself. This one rings a bell as well. I wonder if I've seen this somewhere else before. Just look at the colour of Jesk. sound of the video gets louder as you get closer as well. It's clever. It's really clever. Like, the, the programming and effort gone into this space is just... Uh, it's so impressive. So impressive. An indifferent wonder of an edible place. I've come across this one on Steam. Um, it's free. Um, and it's something to do with, like, <laughs> something to do with, um, like, revered old structures um, basically being swallowed up and, like, ruined, um, I think through modernity or something, I'm not sure. Ponder the violence of erasure of the profound grief and survive the margins of history. Um, who is the developer again? Olio Mingus. I think Olio Mingus has done other kind of games, kind of based around colonialism. Um, uh, as a kind of subject matter. It looks really interesting. Again, another game I'd really like to do a video on at some point. So that looks like some sort of custom controller and oh my gosh through it you like put in ingredients and stuff and the game reacts to um, like the <laughs> the things that you insert into the slots that is incredible as an interactive experience that is really cool The shift. So many games love this kind of old VHS kind of aesthetic, and you know, vaporwave. Vaporwave aesthetic kind of really plays into that as well. It's kind of it's something that <laughs> so many like younger people will like <laughs> get, I guess, because uh, VH days were just over a long time ago now. I mean, I started buying DVDs in like 1999. You know, they were only really around for maybe 15-ish years, I guess, from like 85 to noughties, really, and then they just started dying out in popularity. Hmm. Oh! Okay, I hit a button there, and I've gone back to the, uh, the front of a maze space. 
<laughs> you jump and back in. Can you go for a swim? No, you can't go for a swim. <clears throat> I love how, like, it's a fucking merch stall. <laughs> Sushi getting. <laughs> Funky little planet display there. Total digital club, total digital village, cinema, open screens, chain zine, balcony, connector, lobby merch pier. So, monuments, yeah, we went there with all the contributors. Uh, so I guess we've done the exhibition and we had a look at the stream hall with that musician Total Digital Club I'll have a look in there I think I'm not sure I went there and I don't think I've been in the village bit I don't remember seeing the chain scene either let's have a look uh, let's move a little bit faster. You might have noticed I'm not um, uh, for this event. I'm not like doing my usual walkie thing. Um, basically, I didn't know how large this space was going to be. And uh, I also wanted to be able to talk quite easily, and which I struggle to do when I'm kind of... Go vote, you can vote for every game inside the exhibition. So it looks like there's a whole bunch of awards here. I might just turn the stream volume back up because it looks like... Some interesting music is going down. So what have we got here? Is this the zine bit? I can't remember. Chain zine, yeah. So what's this all about? These are people send letters. Instructions to one the you sit. Hello. Natalie Lawhead's electric zine maker. Ah oh, man, I uh, I've not looked at that myself, but I keep hearing about this electric zine maker that Natalie's worked on, and uh, I've seen like pictures of what people have made on Twitter and stuff. It looks cool. I remember making like a. Our own like school comic back in the day and stuff. It wasn't really a, a zine, like a, 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 you know anything decent or anything kind of widely distributed. But it was it was cool. People used to do so much more of that kind of stuff. Total Digital Club, do Total Digital Expedition, e Exhibition. Total Digital Village. What's the village then? So I'm guessing this is more games. I'm just going to turn the stream volume down Subject again. Area of game design of the Zurich University of the Arts presents a selection of this year's final projects from the Bachelor and Master programs. Cool. Hi, so my name is Dennis, and together project. with Arlene, I worked on the game project Windori Lost Lands of Manera. In our game Windari, you play as a little girl, Tabinga, which got lost in the frozen lands of Manera. You will help her find a way back to her tribe and accompany her on her story. Our goal was to create an easy, accessible cool. game which is intuitively for the players. We focused on telling the story with environmental storytelling and let the player experience different strong emotions. During our project, we faced different challenges. One of them was to work in a team 
during the pandemia and the other was to create a game mechanic which fit with our snow theme. On our website windari.ch you can find our downloadable prototype and it would be very cool if you could give us some feedback. With this feedback we want to develop our game further and we want to that be is able really to cool. release it. In our future we plan to found a game studio together and we would like to create some further project. Uh, best luck to the students, man. That's thunderful. Thunderful, you say? We are an indie game publisher. I don't really know how much like time to spend on each of these. Um, you know, there is absolutely nothing stopping you, the viewer, coming to see this interesting exhibit for yourself. <laughs> I don't know what I just did. <laughs> you say no you more. Say I don't see coffee. But don't worry. All you need is just no. one word. <laughs> it's the word no. No. Whoa. You work late today. No. Whoa. We no. Nice no. Our no. no. I... It's so weird that I should see this game. Um, I was doing some trading at work earlier today and it was all about customer service but also being able to be assertive and I just wanted to tell the guy who was running the training about this game. I was like, there's this game called Say No More and it teaches you, um, you're an intern in an office and you go around and you say no to ridiculous requests. I really... Ah, I wish I'd mentioned it to him now. I really wish. Um, like, literally one of this guy's slides was, um, is no a complete sentence? And uh, people were like, oh, it depends on the context, you know, maybe you can say no, but then you'll need to give more information, or blah blah blah. And all I could think about was this game and people come up to you with stupid requests and you're just saying no. <laughs> um, thankfully, I don't experience that much in my workplace. <laughs> Drug free is an endless non-linear procedural proto-AI algorithm driven composition visually paired with virtual mountains rendered from real-world geographic data. So have they made the world in the game? If so, that's really awesome. Uh, that looks pretty. I wish there was a video to accompany it, but that that alone is enough to pique my interest. Vestiges. Ah, this looks creepy. What a tiny screen as well. This prison really to learn and repair. Oh, that's a political drama. That's interesting. That looks so kind of unusual. Abstract, cosmic, but it's political. That's interesting. how there's like absolutely no explanation for that whatsoever there's n like no information board there's just hard house coming out of a bouncing van <laughs> <clears throat> green screen booth might stick the stream music back on So I've got five drinks I need to find now. I've drunk a drink. I drank a drunk. Yeah. And now there's four more I need to find. So what for? More. 
uh, if I click more information it takes me to a nominee page so yeah if you come into here check out these awards and nominate who you'd like to win I, I know I will be it's exciting look at, everyone, look at all the flamingos in the cinema <laughs> all the happy flamingos I'm kind of <laughs> glitching up the stairs a bit <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> I don't know. I'm confused. <laughs> digital, total digital club. <clears throat> so this is, I think, the last area that I haven't really been around. Oh, there is an actual club. A dance floor. That's cool. It's empty. <laughs> um, he's not interested in dancing. I say he. I'm just assuming it's a he. <laughs> There's another drink. Mine. See, I don't know if they're like a shared instance thing and if other people are actually able to get this. I see like some people have kind of stuck into a big room up there. Is it? I love how like in a convention space they have made a jumping puzzle. <laughs> Did I ever tell you how awful I am at jumping puzzles? <laughs> Oh, I didn't. Right. I'm awful at jumping puzzles. Bloody Guild Wars 2, man. Fuck that game. <laughs> Fuck it. To hell. I hated that game and its fucking exploration jumping puzzles so much. <laughs> There's another drink. These must be, like, instance two people. There's no way. People wouldn't have already gotten them already. How are people getting up there? I can't jump up there. <laughs> How are they doing that? Did, have they jumped out of that window? Memorial has got its own theme tune. I'm just... Everyone, anyone who's watching this, feel free to leave now. I am, I'm literally just wasting your time now. To seriously, stop watching. Come and join in on this when you can, as soon as you can, because you do not want to miss this while it's while it's running. Um, because it would be stupid for you to miss out on this it's awesome literally stop watching this right now come here come and enjoy this I'm not really uh, yeah, I in the effort of uh, expediency I'm going to collect these other drinks, but like I said, you don't have to watch this if you don't want that. This is just me pissing around now. <laughs> because uh, they have provided a collectible and uh, my lizard brain has like clicked into place and now I need to get them all. Merch. <laughs> so, I don't know why I find it so funny. Oh, and you can do, you can donate via th the flamingo. Of course you can. <clears throat> oh, 
I love how the, the streaming ambient like music just to kind of play over everything else. And you know, it's weird and wonderful. You know, it's not just some kind of run-of-the-mill poppy stuff. It's actually pretty beautiful, and the the person before this person is just like a really crazy ass dude. I'm sorry, I don't know the names. I've got four out of five drinks, and I can't find the last one. I failed. <laughs> I bet it's up there, isn't it? It's up there. <laughs> it's the fuck. It's the jumping puzzle. <laughs> why? Why couldn't they just put it in the club bit? Somewhere I could reach. <laughs> I can't do jumping puzzles. I can't do them. <laughs> Alright, enough of this. Thank you so much for tuning in. Come and enjoy this for yourself. It's a maze. Um, I've put the you know, the details in the video description. Come and check it out. Um, it's running from uh, today is the 22nd of July. Twenty second of July and I think it runs don't quote me on this, on maybe like until the 25th or 28th, I'm not sure. But all the details are on the website in the description. Check it out, it's awesome. Thank you very much for tuning into this wonderful and unusual episode of Virtual Rambling. And I'll see you all soon. <laughs>